Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today we're going to be working on a tire just like this. You can see I'm trying to copy something in my shot here, and if we hop over to a different camera, you can see what I had before. I was just working on projecting a whole bunch of textures into this kind of 3D scene to get the back of a car. And the texture projected tire here is just not going to cut it. You can see if we rotate it, it gets all wobbly and the textures aren't matching up. So I just thought, you know what? I'll recreate this completely digital and that'll get a much nicer shot. So we're going to be doing modeling today. So strap in for that. All right. So here's the scene over here, but we're going to start with our own little camera over here. I'm going to hit control and zero on the number pad to make sure that's the active selection. And you can see in my camera settings, I have this image as the background and I've got the reference over here just in case. So let's go ahead and start working on a little bit of modeling here. I'm going to go shift A and drop in a plane. And I'm going to scale this down to around the right size of the detail here. Let's just go into edit mode and we can start. Let's just delete these two verts. So X and delete. I'm going to grab these and we can make a little bit of an edge up here. There we go. Now let's just hit E and extrude along the pattern. There we go. I'd say that's probably good. And now we want to go along the other side and just kind of make sure we match them up pair by pair. So this vert is for that one. And there we go. So that's matching up. Let's just make sure these are kind of smoothed out. I think that's probably good. So let's double select these two and hit F and that'll put in a face. And if we matched them all up correctly, yeah, should match up perfectly. There's some kind of rough ones over here. So I'm going to hit Alt and Shift to select those. Actually, let's do it just in edge select view. There we go. And then go Control B. And this just kind of doubles them up and smooths them out a bit more. We could do that with this as well. Just getting things a little bit smoother in here. Nice. All right, so now that we've got this, let's hit A to select everything and period to zoom in a little bit. We can go Alt Shift and select each edge here. And let's also select, let's actually just go ahead and select everything around the perimeter and go E and Z. That'll just add some thickness to it. Very good. And so now, if we go back into top view with seven on the number pad, let's go into the modifiers and see what we can do with a mirror modifier. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's also add in an array modifier. You can see that goes off to the side. So let's switch the factor from the X axis to zero. And we can turn up the Y axis a little bit here until we get them nicely slotted in there. And let's also just, while we're at it, go ahead and grab in vertice select mode and also in x-ray view. We can just kind of grab these lower ones here and fill in this gap here by sliding them down on the y-axis. And maybe we can smooth this out a little bit so it's a little bit less irregular. If we just grab these, move them down a little bit, Actually, you know what we're going to do? Let's hide everything up here with H and actually C for circle select. And we can just hide everything on that side, H. And we can grab this and in wireframe view so we can see the other one here. Let's hit O and G and Z. Actually, G and Y. Just change the fall off a little bit so we move it down and then hit Alt H. Just making sure this little part here fits a little bit better. If we wanted to, we could work on this bit as well. <laughs> there we go. Nicely matched up. Okay, now with this, if we turn up the array modifier, you can see we've got a nice tread pattern here. 
and we can go add in another modifier. Let's do the simple deform and switch that to bend. Let's also go shift A and add in a new empty. I'm gonna use the plane axis here. And you can see right away, things are pretty insane. If we go into a view with some perspective, the bend modifier is really messing things up. So let's make sure we switch the origin to this empty that we just created. And we can rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis. Oh, there we go. Let's turn this angle to be something closer to 360 degrees. There we go. And I'm gonna actually switch that to negative just so it goes around the bottom. And this looks a little bit crazy right now, but if we turn up the amount of the array, we got some nice tread going on. Cool. And while we're at it here, let's take this face here on the edge. We can move it out a little bit and then down on the Z axis. Then you can see we start getting this tire shape and if we want, we can grab this edge loop here with Alt and Shift once more, and then hit G twice. That'll just kind of move it down a little bit, makes it a little bit smoother. And we can also go Control B to smooth that out and scroll up if we want to add some more smoothness to that. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Just looking at this, matching up the kind of the frequency of how many detailed bits there are in it. I would say this is probably good. You can see we have a little bit of an issue here, but we can get to that in a second. Let's select the empty and the tread at the same time and go shift D. Let's move it over on the X axis and then we can hide this just in case we want to fall back on that later. But for now, we're going to apply the modifiers. There we go. We can delete the empty here. And let's just go three on the number pad to go into side view. <laughs> and you can see I have a few more attempts here. Let's hit slash on the number pad to go into a local view. And I'm gonna go into edit mode here. Let's hit L, select both of these treads and back in three for the side view. We can just duplicate this and rotate it a little bit to make sure it's lining up pretty nice. And this is gonna be kind of funky, but I think we could probably just drop in another one as well. Might be a tiny bit too big, so I'm gonna scale it on the Y axis, just down a little bit. And that might look pretty messed up in context. So let's just take a look at real quick. Yeah, it's not too bad. We'll put that on the other side of the tire. <laughs> All right. So selecting everything, I'm gonna right click and hit Shade Smooth, and you can see that gets some pretty nasty artifacts. So let's go into the Object Data Properties here and hit Auto Smooth underneath Normals, and things start to look a bit better. Let's also select it and add in a Bevel Modifier. You can see that adds some nice smoothness, looking pretty good. Okay, so one more thing. Let's just go Shift S and Cursor to Selected just to get that cursor back there and drop in a cylinder and I'm going to rotate this on the Y axis by 90 degrees and G and Z. Let's just line this up and scale it up. If we go into X-ray view, we can see a little bit better how well that's lining up. Yeah, somewhere around there, maybe scale it down a tiny bit here. And then we can also scale that in on the X axis. I'm going to scale it like this for now. Let's go Control A and apply the scale real quick and then hop into edit mode and then face select. Let's just select both sides here and go Control B. And we can scroll up a little bit to get some more depth to the bevel. And now if we just scale it all down, there we go. We've got kind of the interior of the tire. I'm going to shade that smooth as well. I think that's fitting pretty nicely. Maybe scale it up a bit on the X. Cool. And once again, let's go into the object data properties here and hit auto smooth for the normals. And now we've got a pretty nice tire model. Now this might not be matching up perfectly. Let's go back into our camera view and hit slash to get out of local view. And if we just select this and just kind of drag it and move it back over to where we had it before, let's go maybe wireframe view. We can scale this up or down depending on how thick we think it should be. 
So I think it might be a tiny bit big right now. So I'm gonna select the tread and then select the inner cylinder here and go Control P. That way we've just got a handle for scaling and moving it around. And then we can go S and Shift X. And that just scales it down a little bit, makes it a little bit fatter. And I think that's matching up pretty well with the original tire now. Cool. One more thing that we could do is if we select the tread, you'll notice in the reference here, it's a little bit offset. So it's like every other tire tread. And right now this is completely symmetrical. So let's just go into edit mode real quick. Seven for top view, and then one on the keyboard for vertices select. Z to get into x-ray. Let's just drag and select everything on this side and then go control L and that'll make sure that all the connected vertices are selected. And we can go once again, Z untoggle x-ray and take a look at this. If we rotate it on the X axis, we can get that nice offset that we were seeing before. Cool. That's looking pretty good. And now we can throw this into our scene and have a really nice tire going on. If you found this useful and you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, I've created a completely free video for you that goes over five different tips for integrating your CG creations into actual footage. And if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description. So definitely go ahead and check that out. But hey, I'd say we're done here. I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.